A business and trade between Nigeria and Vietnam have seen significant growth in the last decade, with bilateral trade volumes rising from 280 million US dollars in 2014 to about 700 million US dollars in 2022. This was disclosed by the President of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Michael Olawali Cole, at the Nigeria Vietnam Business Forum. Plus, the Venice correspondent Love Ikuku brings us this report. It is the Nigeria Vietnam Business Forum. It creates an avenue for both countries to push areas of comparative advantage forward. Discussions are geared towards deepening existing relationship, building robust business interaction, partnerships, and meeting new investors. Michael Olawale Cole is the president of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. He discloses that Nigeria's trade with Vietnam accounts for almost 10% of its total volume with Africa. This, he says, is a clear reflection of Nigeria's position as one of the biggest trading partners with Vietnam and the largest economy in the continent. Vietnam enterprises need to explore more opportunities because now these are the best of times for Vietnam. We now in a government that is very, very determined to grow our economy. The SCCI boss, who holds strongly that private sector is sin qua non to trade development, believes that business and trade between both countries have seen significant growth in the last decade. From this forum, we reflect on our remarkable journey of trade, commerce, and bilateral cooperation that has characterized relationship between our two countries. The ambassador extraordinary of Vietnam, Bihun, is happy at the business relationships between Nigeria and his country. He tells a gathering that infrastructure between Nigeria and Vietnam are not competitive but complementary. The jet value turnover between our two countries reached nearly 500 million US dollars, which is still very, very moderate. The wage Vietnam exports to Nigeria reached 150 million dollars, and imports from Vietnam, sorry, imports from Nigeria reached more than 300 million US dollars. Hong expressed worries over insecurity in Nigeria. He stresses the need for both countries to create favorable conditions for business communities. Business environment in Nigeria, I think, is getting better and better. But to the Vietnamese uh, business businessmen, I think the, they are still reluctant because the first thing is the security. Here, the security situation is still in a very, very not so good condition. Some participants speak on their take home from the forum. You know, this sort of uh, forum provides information for Nigerians about Vietnam, what they can do in Vietnam. And it also provides information for Vietnamese uh, in Nigeria. The Nigerians will know what to do in uh, Vietnam. So I think uh, this sort of uh, interaction should be encouraged. Be informed, you will not be deformed. Because what the, um, uh, the ambassador was telling us today was very interesting. He was telling us about the nitty-gritty of what opportunities one can explore in uh, Vietnam. In 2022, Nigeria and Vietnam agreed to strengthen bilateral relations, particularly in the areas of digital economy, telecommunications, agriculture, especially cashew nut processing, and trade, among others. Love Ikuku Uyeduku, Plus TV News. Come back from that report. An agency banking solution allows banks to expand their reach and provide financial services to customers who may not have access to traditional banking channels, such as those living in rural areas or low-income households. I am now being joined by the National Public Relations Officer of the Association of Mobile Money and Bank Agents of Nigeria, Amban, Oluwa Shegu, the late good day. Good morning to you, Shagu. Thanks for joining us on Business Insight. 
Good morning, Justin. I'm happy to be here this morning. All right, there's a whole lot to talk about agency banking, and Nigeria has actually followed that train um, over time, uh, even with more, uh, you know, uh, with more uh, regulation from the Central Bank of Nigeria. But let me just uh, get um, the current scenario of agency banking. Can you give us an overview how it's going so far in the country? Well, the, the journey has been uh, very interesting, yeah. especially since the beginning of the year. Uh, the the attention that agency bank is getting now occasioned by the cash crunch and the the alternative channels for sourcing of uh, cash that the agency bank created during that period has really opened the eyes of many Nigerians to this sector and you you can bet that right now uh, agency banking is gaining more traction. Many people are coming to it, and uh, even banks now, who before now felt uh, it's, uh, they just want to stick to their conventional and old ways, are beginning to also venture into this area to see how they can uh, take advantage of what the sector uh, provides and have an hover. Uh, so, and again, you have many businesses now who before now only uh, get payment for their goods and services via cash uh, also adopting alternative channels and it has also grown their businesses so the sector is gaining uh, demand and more people are getting into the financial inclusion space many people are getting included in the financial spectrum of the country so it's, it's, it's an interesting time all right. Uh, since uh, agency banking uh, regulation was, um, you know, you know, proposed by the Central Bank of Nigeria, over time there have been uh, more regulations vis-a-vis um, -vis, uh, KYC, know your customer. How has that really been? How has that really impacted on the operations of uh, 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 agent bankers and, of course, um, Amban? Uh, what what the CBN has done is to tear the different account opening processes. That uh, there are some accounts that you can still open without BVN, and you can still do a minimum of 20,000 naira daily on such accounts. And there are tier two, tier three, that uh, if you have some other requirements provided, the accounts can still be open for you. So, this has also broken down the, the process of account opening, which was before now had to be a very long process with a whole lot of documentation. But for now, if you do not have any means of education, at least you can still have some level of financial services uh, as, as part of what you can provide. And as you upgrade uh, such accounts, you will begin to have more assets and, and more, more means of transacting uh, via the different platforms. So it is, it is a win-win for the, for the players in the industry. So we want everybody as a place uh, in the financial space. Okay, let's talk about some new trends in agency banking and let us uh, know how far uh, the use of technology such as mobile banking and digital platforms have actually impacted on um, you know, your operations. Tell us more. I didn't get that speech. Let us look at um, some of the trends that have actually uh, occurred uh, in agency banking, specifically the increasing use of technology, uh, such as mobile banking and digital platforms. How have all of that uh, been able to impact on your businesses? And specifically, have you really had uh, challenges uh, with uh, maybe internet operation uh, with um, members and all of that? Well, I think, like I said earlier on, the uh, rency occasioned by the uh, cash crunch earlier in the year has made uh, many of the financial institutions, the banks and the mobile money operators, to really build more on their infrastructure because that is upon which this uh, app and every other uh, channel can can really flow. And so what they have done, and most of them have realized that they need to invest more uh, on, the, on the financial technologies, especially when they are the kind of people they need to employ. Uh, however, that has also been hampered by the, the recent uh, trend in, in exodus of 
uh, many, many uh, fine hands in these areas out of the country. Uh, the jack passing drum has also affected, which means that there are few hands. And of course, that sector again still demands that uh, we have more people to come in and take opportunities. So, so when people say there are no opportunities or job opportunities in the, in the country, this is an area that people can really tap in, mm. get uh, skilled, get their skill on, and then there are opportunities. For now, I know that there are some financial institutions that if they see even 10 tech guys today, they will employ them and pay them well. And so because it's an area that most of the banks are trying to build on, mm. they now realize that, yes, it is bank, bank has gone beyond the brick and mortar that we used to know. It is now uh, the, the brick and the mortar has been removed. Yeah. We, are, we now have agents, banks with soft structure where you can easily go to. And what has made this um, possible is the infrastructure that has been built. Financial, uh -huh. financial infrastructure that has been built to ensure that customers are able to transact seamlessly without uh -huh. issues. Uh, yes, a uh, good thing you mentioned that the banks. Uh, Earlier when we talked about, um, you know, the uh, infrastructure with the telecoms and all of that. But so far, how is the relationship between um, um, bank agents and these traditional banks uh, to ensure financial inclusion, is it seamless so far? We are not there yet uh, because some of them still see agents as their competitors, unfortunately, which is not supposed to be. We are supposed to complement each other. Um, so we have situations where there are disputes at agent locations and the bank staff will tell the customer that they don't have any issue with them, they should just go back to wherever they did the transaction on and go and sort it out. That is not supposed to be. We mm -hmm. are partners in this business. And as, as soon as they realize this, that uh, the more they, they stay away or try to isolate a dispute of agents like this, it's going to hamper on on how customer also sees them. Because customer now realize that when they have some of these alternative channels, I don't want to begin to mention names now, they get faster and seamless services. And if they have issues, they can even, I mean, complain on their app and make calls without having to see anybody and the issues will be solved for them. So some of them use more of these alternative channels more now. and. The banks need to also add, a few of them are already seeing this and already coming to the space and trying to also blend. And, and I, I believe it's a good thing for them, for right. those that are able to realize this. Okay, let's start. Since we've talked about opportunities, let's look at some threats and let's look at some challenges right now. There's this issue of um, lack of trust and understanding among potential customers, uh, issue of security concerns and potentials for fraud. Can you just um, elucidate? Yes, like, like every other innovation and any, any other new thing in any country, uh, you always see if there's original, there always be counterfeit. I, I think, you know, the, the guys out there believe it's an opportunity for them to, to uh, use what is happening now, the, the traction that the sector is getting to take advantage of us suspecting uh, customers or the public. Uh, so we understand that, and uh, in the last couple of months, uh, there has been a whole lot of people who get uh, uh, different kind of messages, and then they latch on those information, release fighter information, and from there, their their, their funds uh, were being debited, and they were they were left to the the the, the situation. Now we have, we realize that, and what I see that the players in the industry, the operators especially are doing, is to constantly build on what they have to ensure the, the buffer, the security around their infrastructure and, and continually educate their customers on how vital some information, personal information are, and they should not release to unauthorized personnel. And most importantly, they should ensure that they keep... All right, uh, do we still have um, uh, Shego Elegbede there? I will try and get him back to him because there's a whole lot to talk about concerning this issue of, uh, you know, 
uh, trust and um, security which should be addressed. And also there is another talk of um, difficulty in scaling up and maintaining a large network of agents, uh, limited access to capital and resources for bank and agent. It goes on and on. There's um, a whole lot to talk about, but we'll take a break and see if we can reconnect uh, with Shago. Shago, are you there now? I'm here. Uh, sorry, we lost you at some point. Uh, I was, I was just uh, recapping some of the challenges, uh, you know, that uh, uh, you know abound them in that sector. Aside from this issue of uh, fraud and security, uh, there's also the difficulty in scaling up and maintaining a large network of agents. How do you think that can be addressed? Yeah, it, it still uh, borders on what I just said. Uh, it is. Um, the responsibility of the providers and the banks to ensure that they constantly uh, build on the current infrastructure that they have, and I, I think in this in this regard, uh, you can you can you can have the confidence that most of the uh, financial uh, technology driven uh, financial institutions that we have in this country are, are really good at this, and those were caught that were caught in your pain. Uh, in, earlier in the year, where the banks no felt everything was just about uh, deposit and the likes, these guys are really in for business and they are not resting. They are constantly building on infrastructure, mm. ensuring that every of uh, one or two customers they had on the on their platform uh, is catered for, and they have seamless experience, best of experience using right. their platforms. All right, so Shelly, if I should just put it succinctly now, uh, what does the future hold for agency banking in Nigeria? It's, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. Uh, for those that can see beyond what they are currently do, I mean, agents out there, for those that can see beyond the cash in, cash out, withdrawal and deposit that they do, uh, they will see that there's still uh, uh, a lot of opportunities that we can tap into. Uh, recently, the, the Minister for Humanitarian uh, Affairs uh, was on, on one of the, the sister stations mm. and said the cash policy they are going to dish out is going to be done through agent, agent bank networks. Okay. And that, that is a plus for us. Uh, it means that for every agent in their different areas, they are still getting traction and like getting opportunities to to work and uh more of, uh in also in in agro we have opportunities there we have agents in rural areas who can help farmers uh, uh to to uptake their products and um, using their platform uh, it also depends on this uh different uh, financial institutions to see these opportunities i'm, I'm yeah. not going to say more beyond here yeah. Okay. I'm not going to say more beyond here because uh, it's, an, it's, it's, it's something that if we see serious uh, uh, players in the industry that want to take advantage of some okay. of these things, we can, we can talk with them. All right, and thank you so much, um, Shago. And a whole lot of, um, on that will be discussed uh, when Amban holds um, in its national conference um, sometime next month. Thank you so much, Shago, for your time. Shago is the uh, national PRO of uh, Amban. That's the Association of Mobile Money and Bank Agents in Nigeria. Thank you so much for all that you have said on the show this morning. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Justin. Thank you. Uh, just before we go on the show, Nigerians and indeed Africans have been encouraged to harness and promote tailor made solutions to cater to indigenous demands. The advice was given on the sidelines of a graduation ceremony for Nigerians who underwent training on semiconductor designs by Chip Lab. Details in this report. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now. <laughs>